Hey folks, I'm doing this video on a rainy first day of autumn here on the Boston Common. Today, we're exploring a common conundrum, patients experiencing thermal pain, specifically sensitivity to cold, and pointing to a tooth that has already had root canal treatment as a source. At first glance, this seems perplexing. Root canal treated teeth lack an intact dental pulp, which means that they should not respond to thermal stimuli. Cold sensitivity, in particular, requires functioning a delta nerve fibers within the dentin. Even if a canal was missed during treatment, persistent thermal sensitivity is extremely rare. While heat-initiated C fibers in residual pulp tissue could potentially cause sensitivity in some cases, it's pretty uncommon. So when a patient reports thermal sensitivity in a root canal-treated tooth, we should immediately consider referred pain. The key is to listen carefully to the patient's chief complaint and then attempt to duplicate the symptoms with clinical testing. Perform thermal tests not just on the affected tooth, but also on the neighboring teeth on the upper and the lower jaw on the same side. Remember that referred pain usually stays on one side, rarely crossing the midline. In a recent case, a patient pointed to a root canal treated tooth as the source of cold sensitivity. By conducting cold tests on adjacent teeth and the tooth treated, we discovered that the actual culprit was a nearby tooth with a vital pulp requiring endodontic treatment. After addressing it, the patient's symptoms resolved. This brings up an important question. Why do patients often perceive pain in a tooth that has had root canal therapy? Well, an insightful study by Hutchins and Reynolds provides some answers. They performed occlusal fillings and maxillary first molars on both sides of a patient's mouth. On one side, the procedure was painless under anesthesia, but on the other, it was performed without anesthesia, causing some pain. A month later, they stimulated the maxillary ostium inside the nose using a pinprick. Interestingly, the patient felt pain inside the nose on the side where the filling was painless, but felt tooth pain on the side where the procedure had been painful. They called this phenomenon habit reference. It suggests that previous painful experiences can become seeding grounds for referral of future pain. This reinforcement and memory of pathways of pain may explain why a tooth with a history of pain might be the first place the patient identifies pain when experiencing new pain. But remember that pain is usually referred along the same dermatomes and does not cross the midline. The study underscores the importance of providing painless dental procedures and effective anesthesia, not only because it improves patient comfort, but also it may help reduce the odds of future diagnostic confusion caused by referred pain. As clinicians, we must recognize that perception is not always reality. Active listening combined with thorough testing and as well as our understanding of pain mechanisms allows us to distinguish between the site of pain and the source of pain in these kinds of situations. Mastering this distinction is the hallmark of excellent diagnostic skills in endodontics. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you found this information helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more endo videos. Until next video, I'm Ali Nase and let's save some teeth.